Hi, I'm Brendan Fair. And I'm Mahandra Delfino. A decade or two ago... Hmm? Closer to three, really. A while back. We starred in the cult hit WB show, Roswell. And while we are, in fact, ex-co-stars, we are also actual exes. In real life. Boyfriend and girlfriend exes. Hmm, unnecessary clarification. But welcome to The X-Files, where we analyze all things Roswell. Episodes, co-stars, guest stars, and all the goings-on in front of the camera and behind the scenes. In our probe, we may or may not agree, we may or may not get along, but if our history is any indication, we will most certainly dig up old stuff from the past and throw down. With guests, old and new, weighing in on who was right and who was wrong. Oh, if we remember it, we're going to talk about it. And if we don't remember, it's all good, because I kept my teenage diary to cross-reference, corroborate, confirm... Wait, what? Correct. So be prepared to pick a side. Your actual diary, like, for real. Having a change of heart? More like a change of underwear. Welcome... Mm. To to the the X-Files. Oh my gosh, how are you guys? Good, how are you? Well, I'm actually um, pretty good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I kind of like follow the Instagram stuff going on and noticed you guys were making another show. And I thought, wow, how cool that you two like actually did that. I know. Yeah. We sent you the link to watch if you want. I swear I it's not it. it's not a big commitment. Might I mean they're little snippets, 30 minutes. 20 what would yeah, you say it's, no it's a real fucking show what are you talking about <laughs> no but also you know when you're like, you're spinning <laughs> and tuck into an hour show it's not the irishman <laughs> but i mean it's a good show <laughs> that would be great if it was <laughs> but yeah true. it's been a lot of fun it's uh yeah you know those that that fan base they're amazing it's incredible really i mean you know it's funny because when i look back like i i watched heat wave again yeah. Which was like, oh, well, I think I have questions for you two on that. We have uh, questions oh, for you as well. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> we rewatched as well for this podcast. And we were like, oh, we had a lot of questions. Shit, that happened. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> My God. Um, yeah, it, it was really cool to go back in time a little bit for me and really check that out. You know, I have. Um... Do you watch any of the old stuff you do? Yeah, do you I, visit, I really, revisit? I, I really don't. And yeah. um, because I want to keep moving forward. Right. But what I did, the feeling I got was amazing. Oh, good. And I, I've watched a few things because I've done different interviews for different things like my so-called life, the OC. Right. Um, it was really one of my favorite times of my life was doing Roswell, actually. And I really started to think about it. And I started to think of like, Fuck, driving home at four in the morning from West Covina or from, <laughs> you know, or the yes. morning from Vasquez Rocks. Yes. And I'm places cool like thing. that, you know, <laughs> right. and, and just going, man, fuck, I can't believe I'm doing this. Um, but yet on the other side of all that was the gift of being able to work with, I really thought you guys were so talented when you and you still are probably i just haven't seen you in a while <laughs> probably. who knows who knows I mean, it's, it's a coin flip we don't yeah it is a coin flip sure dude but um it was such an amazing time of everybody's life you know because um I, having done a lot of shows with young people um i feel like i never really aged you know like i kind of stayed in this pocket of of working with young people and stuff and i remember a lot of the you know, the bullshit, the complications, the studio production stuff and all that shit. But I also remember a lot of the like just showing up and doing stuff and saying, come on, we could get out of here like in 10 fucking hours. We don't really have to stay 14 or 15 or 18, do we? Um, <laughs> and and only being surprised to find out we couldn't get out because of all the other elements that were right. involved. Right. And um, that said, you know, it was such a great part of my life, you know, uh, doing that. Well, you directed more episodes than anyone else. 
Isn't that crazy? You directed I, 13 of, I don't know how many we have, 63 or five or six or something like that. But you directed 13 of them. And Heat Wave was the first one. Right. So that was our introduction to you and your introduction to us. I know. And I remember like my my secret was just to keep the camera rolling, no matter what kind of hot scene was happening. I mean, and it really was it, baptism by fire. What a first episode. Yeah. yeah, it was it was also like until you guys said uncle, I wasn't gonna cut. <laughs> Did we ever say uncle? No. Well, so, yeah. I mean, yeah. having watched it, obviously the first uh, you know, the first little bit was, you know, me and Mahandra, Michael, Maria, you know, in the diner. Um, which was, you know, for that kind of time and place, and especially with mine and Mahandra's relationship and the relationship in the show, pretty hot and heavy. And the yeah. hilarious part is that was the first time my mother was on set. Um, <laughs> and she was from, you know, like from Canada come and I'm like, come watch the show. And then I get this script and I'm like, you oh. gotta fucking be kidding me. <laughs> That's the one, right? That's um, the one. Totally. Terrible. Yeah. I, um, uh, I don't know. I, like I said, I have such a fondness for it all that, um, it, it was an incredible time. It was an incredible time for me. And and it was a wonderful time to start that, that particular show. Um, and, you know, with David Nutter and all those crazies. And yeah, I think you had like three or four different DPs. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, we had, had, we had three we all lighting gone with the fucking wind. And it was like, you know, <laughs> an hour in between setups and stuff. Yes. And it was, it was ridiculous, but you guys all held the glue together. You all held it together real nice and made it really easy for me, really easy for me to just keep going forward. You know, everybody had such a great opinion about it. That's I mean, such a relief to hear too, Patrick, because we were watching back and obviously when we were there, we were so young and then we're watching now and we're going, oh my goodness, I feel so bad. This must have been a terrible experience with just a bunch of kids running around and having their like kid crap, you know? And was this torture for Patrick? And it's just lovely to hear that you look back and it was as fond yeah, of does it feel like a, you. Yeah, did it feel like a it was not torture? <laughs> the only torture for me was the hours and, you right. know, um, and, you know, my supporting um, assistant directors who just kept like milking it, you know? And well, I, I learned a lot. It was funny. You're one of the first directors I remember learning uh, anything from really not that I had well that's not entirely true but it, it's one of the ones that I you I learned I remember earliest and I remember more things um, and just in terms of you know shooting and 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 the the life I suppose of an actor on a television show and I remember one day we were um, it wasn't heat wave but it was another episode and we blew through the call sheet um you know by lunchtime we had we had like two pages to shoot after lunch and as kids you know we were all just we we you know we worked tons of hours on that show yeah. and any and any time we could get out early or whatever else we were you know we were all for it and we were like let's do it in a one or let's do whatever else you know we were all fighting yeah. for that and i said you know and i went up to you and i was just like we're gonna be done two hours after lunch like we're out and it would have been, you know, an eight hour day or whatnot. And you were like, oh, no, 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 no. They're like, we have to milk the 12 hours because if we don't, they're going to think we can shoot everything in eight hours and we're never going to get that time back. It was like spend, right. you have to spend the money or else you'll never get that budget. And it was the same with hours. And so we ended up having a lot of fun. And like you said, but we ended up having to kind of milk it. And I was just like, this is so backwards. Like you are not rewarded for doing things. I used to get efficiently so and well. I used to get in so much trouble. I mean, it was like crazy. It was crazy, and it's like you know, you, you guys did the work, you did the quality, the crew did it and stuff. And it's interesting you should say that because I remember one Halloween, I wanted to get everybody out so they they go trick or treating with their kids and stuff like that. And we literally were done after lunch again uh, with that vibe, and and they were saying to me, "No, we have stuff from tomorrow we can pull up." I said, "No." And that's not the point of this. The point right. is, so everybody works 18 hours. We just want this one day that they could go be with their families, myself included, you know, right. at the time. And uh, they were so upset with me that I did that. I was like, wow, are you kidding me? So, hence, 
five years later are so um in fact i have my roswell ammer on my wall here um <laughs> you know i had said to somebody wait yeah, your hammer a hammer um, we got hammers oh, yeah, wait do you I remember have... this mahandra no but i'm wondering i'm like this is this was a gift this was a gift at the end of the show. It was signed by all the grips. Oh, I love that. And, oh. and, and what happened was, it was that Carol Trestle came down and said I was in trouble. And then Jason called me and all these people said, hey, you can't do that anymore and blah, blah, blah. So I yelled out, well, why don't you just get a hammer and hit me on the dick with it and we'll say it's over <laughs> with, right? <laughs> so the next day, Beatty. Oh, nice. Beatty. Yeah. They gave me this autograph hammer and said, anytime you want to use it, bro, just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> On that story. And oh. uh, I have my collection of shit anyways. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the things that was like, yeah, okay. But that said, one of the guys who signed this hammer um, had died uh, a few years later uh, from cancer that I was connected to because I went through cancer. And... Um, what I didn't know was that his wife came up to me and at, at the memorial and said to me, I have to tell you something. One of Tom's biggest thrills was the idea that he could get home and trick or treat with his kids the day that you wrapped early. And that was so rewarding to me to hear that, um, that like it actually meant something to a family that we did that and we all did it together. We all said, we're out of here. Let's just do it. You know? Right. Oh. So it kind of blew off that stigma. Of, it's, of, it's, of, it's worth a hammer to the dick. Oh, it was, yeah. <laughs> it's only been used three times since then. <laughs> three times is all you need. You know, <laughs> I'm the only moil with a hammer. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, you directed more episodes than anyone. Um, you know, without going into detail, you're you were you're probably the one I remember most, and you're probably my favorite. But we have to have other people on here. They they we probably won't listen. That. They probably we won't can't listen officially to this. say we can't officially <laughs> say it. So we'll, we'll proof understand. is in the pudding. Cut that out. <laughs> but... The proof is in the pudding. But you did you you taught you know a lot of things, and it was funny because um, again, you know, getting what um, kind of more onto the technical side. But this was my first rodeo. In a sense, I had acted in Vancouver uh, a, a little bit and, you know, got a resume on, you know, a bunch of shows and stuff as guest stars. But this was kind of my first rodeo in terms of something um, that went on for a period of time and something to spend time on. Very much so your first rodeo. But go ahead. What do you mean? It was very much so your first rodeo. Oh, well, yes. But I'd been on yes. set. I wasn't some complete fucking moron. I was just the half moronic. Not and complete. <laughs> still still haven't reached 100 <laughs> still still haven't gotten out of that but um it um because you know having um you know having my feet in directing now which i'm really uh which i love and interested in and the eraser room i remember you were one of the first ones and it was in heat wave where we have you know the eraser room which is literally the eraser room where you go bang out i don't think kids realize this anymore because it's on um you know now it's on um whatever they're yeah, doing on computers yeah. and yeah, um I whiteboard. Don't even, yeah whiteboard and all that stuff but you bang out the erasers and we were um you know not banging out each other but kissing in there we're and it was erasers. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very tight space um you know it was built and you had a camera I mean you were right. however many feet away 20 feet away and i was just like this wait this is not making sense to me like you can't how can you see us because i didn't understand lenses and right. you were one of the first on roswell that i remember um this was episode nine that you that loved the use of long lenses of 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 getting in there and i just remember going wait what and that was like my one of my first things that I think peak my interest in like there's so much more to this, you know, not only making TV shows, but directing specifically and and then how you do that. And um, I remember every time I asked you about things, you were just so patient and you would explain, well, this is what it does, this is why I like it, and et cetera, et cetera. But that was one that will always stick out for me. And still to this day, like it's like, you know, that's 
you know, I'm just like, put on the, you know, put on the 100, put on the 120, we're doing this, we're going in. And it's, I always like your name is always in my mind. Oh, sweet, man. Yeah, it was like a really, I think, um, um, who did the pilot? Was it Frex? Who, who did the pilot? Nutter. Nutter. Yeah, I think Nutter kind of started that idea. And uh, I don't think he did it on stage, though. I think he did it more on the exteriors. Okay. I decided to move that whole look on stage as well. So we would literally have to rip shit out, rip walls of other sets out, so I could put the camera there to shoot things like the eraser room. And, um, you know, it, 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 everybody, I mean, that's the first thing they would say to me in the morning. It's like, what wall do you want out? <laughs> Can we use the hammer? <laughs> yeah, like this guy. <laughs> so, so, so they could get ahead of the, the, the deal so it wouldn't take so long when we were ready and rehearsing. And um, I really always enjoyed that look. That look was really compressed. It really felt kind of alienish kind of vibe of, of like your world, which would be the aliens world versus the human kind of world, you know, vibe we were in. And it made everybody, um, I don't know, it seemed like, like you could really, you could, you could break the proscenium and get past, you know, what our normal TV show look was. And really get into the eyes and really get into the soul of what everybody was trying to convey in their acting. And the one thing that um, I have always admired in filmmakers is the idea that that you could see their eyes. You could really get in and, and see what this action was about. Not just the words and the spirit of the acting, but reading what they say and, and really believing it, you know, because that's where it's all at, I think, to tie it all in. And um, I ended up not doing that as much, you know, later on in life because it is time consuming. And, right. You know, and, and there's a lot of people looking at their watches, as you know, making your uh, B and T. And there's a lot of people going, "Oh fuck, what are you doing?" Right, right. <laughs> We've got to yeah. make our day. And also for you know the listener at home, um, I'm not going to say anyone on the show had a prominent nose, but a long lens is our friend. Oh, and oh yeah. Brendan, I'm not talking about you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was a big eye opener, and I think that's why we're both obsessed. I mean, I will say during BNT, that was a big nightly fight. I'd say tomorrow, can we have a longer lens? It's, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the it says I directed so it, but I'm not sure I did. <laughs> but yeah, I, dude, was, I, that <laughs> I know what you're talking about. <laughs> You know, one of the reasons I don't do it anymore is because I was getting way too much help. So. <laughs> also, Patrick, I didn't bring this up until like day six, you know, which is so unhelpful. Yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> wait, I don't have an eye. Wait, you don't do it anymore? I don't I don't direct anymore, no. Um, I didn't know. I, how did I not know this? You should uh, call, you know, you should call more. I mean, he didn't give me his number. He's got Reach me blocked, out. I think. Yeah, you gotta reach out. Man. Well, I gotta go through Mahandra. Just right? ask. Yeah. No, yeah, you do. <laughs> you drove by me on the freeway, I held up a bag of oranges. It was really clear to me. <laughs> <laughs> like changed. the Valentine's <laughs> balloons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you know, I I just feel like uh, like television has turned into such a factory and a, a meaningless yeah. art form. It's turned more into a product of. And uh, apparently anybody can do it. And, you know, it, it, well, I know it's, it's, it's like, I don't know, you know, it, it's just changed dramatically in the last four or five years that uh, for me, it wasn't really rewarding anymore. It wasn't like, I, I, I didn't feel I could really bring to it what people were, I was bringing too much to it. And right. Yeah. They want you to homogenize. Well, you, it's, it's funny. You were, um, you know, every we had great directors. Everyone was like, but you were. There was always a certain energy when you came on. But I do remember you. Re, you in in the, in the best way required. It's why you got a hammer on the wall. You required the most amount of work from both the actor, from us, and from the crew. Blowing right. out walls, wanting to do things, and they were all done. And we, they were actually all excited, even though it was just like. Yeah. What is, you know what I mean? But, and I remember you getting, 
I mean, maybe you did in the backs, but from what we saw, like a lot of flack, a lot of like, what does he want to do? What is going on? And with other directors, it was just kind of this, you know, not all of them, but kind of an in and out. And you always were asking to do something that no one else had, you know, thought of or wanted to or was willing to put in the effort to. Yeah, you, kind were, of had this you thing. were directing. Somebody said to me once as a, as a director, um, like in, in everybody's, every show I've ever done, they go, oh, do you do movies? Do you do movies? And it's like, the reason they asked me that is because that was the spirit I came in with. It, totally. And that's what I wanted to do with Roswell and do with you guys. And, um, you know, there was so much at stake, it seemed like, in the look of the show that I wanted to protect. And that when I did want to make one, I wanted it to make it my own. I wanted to make it a film. I wanted to make it. I didn't want to just hack through it. I didn't want to do what some directors do, which show up and get a master and a couple overs and we're done. Right. Um, right. I really want, I mean, those days we had to do stuff like that sometimes, you know, due to the clock. But, you know, yeah. I could do something really cool during the day and you guys were on board with it, man. I was all for it. Yeah, and I mean, you directed. Thing. Go ahead. And Mom. everybody, no, I was going to say everybody. It was it was such a surge of energy because it was exciting. Everyone was so on board. Yeah. It was. It changed the climate. It was such a wonderful experience. And I also think it was there was something in the air of realizing that it was the beginning of a transitional time in the TV industry where it was going to go to a place of now it's just like cookie cutter episodes. It is. And I, I found that like, uh, especially when I got and I kind of moved on into like shows like Gossip Girl and stuff like that, where they just wanted to, you know, be in the wide environment of New York and ballrooms and things like that. Um, you really there's no way you can show that in real long lenses. You know, you, you really have to get wider. And then you again, you're lighting gone with the wind and you're, you're doing all this stuff for these massive shots. So it's a time consuming. So you never really got the chance and plus the um a lot of television dps you know i mean they you know they're they make it happen or not you know they support you or not when you're a, a guest director right um, yeah you start feeling a lot that of DPs are used to directors that don't know what they fucking want right so they jump in and they are now the look they're creating the look for that director as opposed to somebody like me who literally comes in and says, okay, here's what I want to do, boom, 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 you know, and, and, right. go and that was my spirit. I always felt like, like, like I said, anything I ever stepped on, I'm, I'm really trying to make a movie as opposed to a TV show. Right. Which and is literally why you're hired to be there. It's like, please elevate this show. Elevate, so it doesn't, yeah. yeah. So it's not just a TV show. It feels like a movie every episode. And right. are you, um, are you going to? Do you have any plans to direct a movie or do you write it all or what is? Well, I do. You know, it's funny. I'm working. I'm just finishing a little project I worked on that was a passion project. Um, so I literally started like two years ago <laughs> and uh, it's a short film and um, I'm actually in it. Love that, Patrick. Yeah, I am. It's like a mind fucker. But anyways, <laughs> I had to put myself on the other side of it just to see what it felt like. Right. Right. I never knew. I mean, I've done like little short things, you know, but I've never like been a character in something. And so I, I wanted to tell a story and do it, do it my own money and do my own thing and and not have anybody looking at their watch or giving me any BS. Right. So uh, I ended up doing a, a improv uh, script uh, with some actors and improv artists that I've been working with over the last two years. And it was a blast. And then I put it together and I realized, what the fuck is this? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> In a good or bad way? Wait. It's all you improv. never know. There's, there's oh, no okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fix this thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so that's why it's taken so long. But um, and then I decided to do the music to it because I'm musically inclined. So, right. yeah, so I've done that as well. And, um, you know, it was kind of like to stay alive uh, in a way of not letting go. But again, my problem was, is I realized when I made what I made for me is that. And it's probably good that you guys called me now because I realized that what I did is I made a TV show. I didn't make a fucking movie. And it's the way I shot it and all that stuff. And 
And I really had to redo stuff and really look at it and re-edit it and really cut shit away that I didn't need to really understand that um, my idea was there, but I was so trained in the television mind's eye that I didn't really achieve what I wanted to. So I've been working on it to get it there now. So, you know, I mean, that's that's interesting just though. You're going off and doing your own thing. It's like, you go, wow, well, yeah, sure, that's the scene, but is it the scene at the end? Right. Of- it's like this was the intention, and now I've done it, and I see what I've finished. And interesting, I'm actually more back to where maybe my roots are, or maybe it's just autopilot, like where, yeah, I mean, this is what we're grappling with <laughs> or trying. Yeah, this is the interesting thing of we've always just been the puppets, right? We've been like the meat in front right. of the camera, and we've obviously collaborated you know, with directors and and you've worked on some shows that allow you a little more freedom than others and other films that allow you a little more of that. But, you know, in the end, you kind of do your thing, you walk away, they're going to put whatever music they put to it, they're going to cut it from here to there and make it this length. And this was, this was what this, you know, it was the first time we, I've ever, and I think Mahan, you know, that we've ever really done something, um, on our own in terms of being able to like, we were, we, you know, from cradle to grave, um, every success and every mistake um, we got to own. And, you know, there's really kind of no one else to blame, but ourselves. And you have this idea of what you're going to put out there. And then you have the grand plans and then you're like, Oh, this is, this is, this is, this is what we have to work with. Restrictions come in. "Mm." Maybe we're making a different cake. (laughs) I agree with you 100%. And it's interesting you should say that because the whole puppet factor, the whole marionette factor, I mean, my whole purpose, I think, is to cut the strings of those marionette strings when I get on a show. Right. Working with actors like yourself and and saying, you know, like like a point, like I work with John Larroquette. I worked with him for like, I worked with, him with uh, Zach Levi, you know, on, 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 um, on Chuck. Right. And it's like, you know, I I didn't talk to him for four days shooting him. I said, good morning. How you doing? Here's what we're doing. Da, 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 da. And then he'd go. But I realized, man, I haven't talked. I didn't give this guy a note for four days. I got to go talk to him and just say, you know, he might think I'm a hack or whatever. Right. I, walked up to him and I said, dude, I'm really, you know, I just want to say, look, you're doing a great job. I love everything you're bringing. I'm capturing so much stuff and I really appreciate it. I'm sorry I haven't given you any notes. And what he said to me was so profound. He said, you know, as an actor, when I don't get a note from a director, I'm having a good day. And (laughs) I'm like, going, yeah, that's it. And that's been my theory in the sense of television directing. When I get on a stage, I don't want to move you guys and manipulate you guys. I tell you what the space is. Yeah. But you know what's interesting, Patrick? I will say this. I remember this very clearly. When you would come on set, any notes, it was like, okay, I'm going to take this very seriously. Like, oh, I want to, I want to fulfill Patrick's vision. I trust him. And then we would have so many other directors come in and they'd give a note. I'd be like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. And not apply it whatsoever. Good note, big guy. Sure. We'll do that. I'd be like, yeah, (laughs) and then do like the opposite. No, but it was, you know, it is such an interesting thing. I do think that happens to TV shows where you're like, who is this person? I don't want to listen to them. I've been doing this now for two seasons or whatever. And it feels like this imposition as opposed to a collaboration and a trust. Right. And, you know, it's funny. We get actors in there who are really good actors, you know, whether it be Colin Hanks or whoever came in, you know, to to work, Nick Wexler. All these guys had this beautiful just kind of vibe, you know. I mean, the whole cast did. Everybody did it. And everybody chose a road. And they went down that road and I got to watch that and knowing yeah. that, that you guys knew what you were kind of doing in the sense of that character. No, you right. did. And right. it was easier for me. You say you had trusted me. It was easy for me to trust you as well. And then, you know, I mean, I have people like, you know, Kadams who would look at a cut and go, God, this is great. How'd you get them to do this? I didn't tell them shit. They did it. They brought it. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> right. Yeah, it's amazing. They brought it on. And it was almost like that was the secret formula was try to leave them alone. Let them just kind of do their thing and gel. You know, Bill Sadler, 
all of them. You know, the, I only had one problem with one actress, and you know, I won't mention any names. Um, and my only note was heard is learn your fucking lines, man. <laughs> Just really quick question, Patrick. Are they in the room right now? Are they on this <laughs> I was like, we both know who it is, Patrick. It's fine. I was like, I've well, talked well, about it. Old long lens nose <laughs> over here. Well, one of my favorite things with you, Mahadra, is that I think I, I think in in the heat wave, I handed you a broom and said, oh, you, know, "You could just be sweeping up." He said, "How do I use it?" No idea. <laughs> no idea. I mean, by the Zero way, it clue. was so terrible because at the time, you know, Brendan probably has a different version of this, but I thought Brendan and I were dating. And we'll cover that up later. You know, we'll figure out whether we were or not. <laughs> we'll but go through the timeline. Well, you know, and his mom, as he said before, that was her first day on the set. And I, the first day I met her. And it was just so unfortunate to show these, you know, um, yeah, my, ability that I couldn't brew. I couldn't my use mom I couldn't was see, very, I, I guess we were close could, to dating or I had mentioned you to my mom. See, that's unfortunate. You because know, because there, <laughs> there was a, my mom literally, and if, you know, this this is going to paint her the wrong picture if you know nothing else about her but she was like i don't think that girl knows how to sweep yeah. she was she was the very broomy, concerned broom, with the brooming i mean action. the brooming <laughs> that's what we call it now <laughs> which is unfortunate but i'll tell you this every time i sweep at home think of that day <laughs> and i don't know that it looks better these days by the way but it does but, get the job done <laughs> but that it's was better be, it's better to be judged on your sweeping than your acting that's right true. but what like, and what's funny boy. too in terms of trust though was um you know you say you trusted us and so you didn't you know and and you know other actors out there and you don't have to give them any notes but it's when you trust also when i trust the director i'm willing to maybe do or say things or whatever, you know, act the scene for lack of a better term in such a way where, because I trust you, there's a freedom there. And that freedom right. allows you to do maybe something else you wouldn't normally do, or it just kind of loosens you up, which is always, um, you know, better for kind of any performance athletically or anything else. And so it's almost it's this reciprocal thing without anything even being said because I will trust you to come and say like, um, can we talk about this? <laughs> like I'm not gonna let better? you hang your I'm not gonna let you hang yourself, right. but I get the freedom to go like I can hang myself because he's gonna you know cut me down and set me free and it and it's gonna be great in the end. Um, and and it's funny the way that works. You're very protective of yourself, dude. You were like, there's there's. If somebody gave me a note by camera, let's say somebody was just stopping by, whatever, it was a writer or whatever, and they give me a note to give you because that's what they like to do. And none of them show up to give you the note, but they send it through the director. Um, I would say, he's going to fucking hit me. I'm not going <laughs> to give him that fucking note. There's no way. He's going to punch me right in front of everybody. I said, I couldn't take that humiliation. And then they back off and they go away. Uh, and be, but you were very protective of that guy, of that character. And I agree. I think the more relaxed you were with me or any other director, you were able to push him. And you were able to push that character into a place that was really cool, man. I mean, really cool. And it's funny. You're, unpredictable. Like... You're very unpredictable about how you were going to work the scene and handle the scene. But you definitely had an idea when you came in. I yeah. definitely had an idea and I still think I do, but I think I'm more, and this is an interesting thing. I think I'm more open now. Um, you know, Mahandra's like, what are you see? <laughs> um, but it, it's I mean. like, I take a certain amount of pride in what you just said, but I also, I also want, you know, you want to grow as a person and as an actor and everything else. And like, I don't, it's, you know, again, it's, it's a, <laughs> it's a great story but i don't i also want you to be able to i mean i know you would have if you really wanted to because i mean i don't think anyone scared you um don johnson you know what i mean it's my it's still oh, yeah. one of my it's still one of my favorite stories yeah yeah um my faves <laughs> what will you just give me a what was the don johnson story is this uh was there a fight <laughs> oh the don oh, can you can you can we go over the don johnson story uh which one um on Prince nash on Nash Bridges, the um, 
I guess he was he was late with the um that you pulled out of your he was coming up to yell at you and you Oh yeah. Yeah, and I pulled out his <laughs> album that I bought at a thrift store. <laughs> I said, dude, I said, dude, are you gonna yell at the only guy that bought this album? <laughs> That's amazing. I, I love how you picked it up out of the thrift store and just like, it's, like, the, the, it's basically your to get him to sign it for an auction, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and it, but it turned around when he was upset with me, you know? Like, right. He literally looked at me from across an ice skater and said, You call yourself a fucking director? And he was coming at me, man. And I was like, Oh, this is fucked up. And uh, rightfully so, because he came after a lot of directors, you know? And uh, so that's when I pulled the album out. I said, dude, I, I bought this. You're not going to be the only guy that bought this, are you? <laughs> and you got to <laughs> love that that worked. <laughs> I was surprised. I was surprised. But, you know, he was cool because, you know, I'd ask for another take on his and uh, his stuff. And I know this is a Nash, but and he'd say, but you said that take was great. And I said, yeah, I thought it was really great. And he says, well, then print two of those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, I mean, there's a he's got a point. <laughs> Double it up. Oh Double it up, goodness. man. Yeah. yeah. That's you so that's so, so what learn myself not to do those kind of things, you know, in my time. What's yeah. the, but was there is is there kind of an like an is there a uh I guess kind of a culture, whether it's from the producers um or the execs or the actors where they did i mean obviously at some point um the whole thing changed for you but where you where you did shut down or yeah like where you just go like you know what if you guys want to you know fucking bury yourselves then do it yeah. and then and you know was there was there certain shows even back then that you were like okay like this is like how do you talk to an actor who's just not willing to be kind of talked to like I are suppose. we to, is are they in the room right now are they <laughs> sure they are, <laughs> they are. My, my family is like that but uh <laughs> yeah, yeah anytime i block an evening of dinner they get really upset with me <laughs> uh, but they uh <laughs> yeah now you know what the deal is dude is like <laughs> It's like you can tell when you come into an environment, you can tell what that environment's about. And you have to really be that for me as a director, I have to be cautious of, of how I say it, what I say. Um, and unfortunately, I learned a little bit too late in life, you know, but, you know, but before I directed, I worked with like really big movie stars when I was a costume designer and a costumer and all that. And um, I pretty much heard a lot of the stories about episodic directors. Okay. Right. So I kind of knew coming into this when I made this choice of a history of how people responded or what they would say about directors and stuff like on my so-called life. And, you know, um, I remember on my so-called life, Jared Leto came up to me and he said, you're not like those other guys. And I said, I thought what he was saying, he could tell I was new. Oh, but what he was saying was he appreciated I wasn't like those other guys. Right. right? That I was straightforward and, and just letting him be Jared Leto. Right. Uh, and, you know, you know, you, you learn when you walk on that, you know, actors are people or professionals or artists. They bring shit. And the problem is that 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 you have showrunners and you have writer producers and people who have handles that shouldn't have them uh, giving notes and telling you how it is. Like I used to go tone meetings, you know, tone meetings are like two or three, as you know, two or three hours long. And somebody's telling you exactly the tone of everything. And I'd say, well, you're not gonna get them to do this. You're not gonna get them to do that, but we'd like you to get them to do this and that. And I'm like, well, why'd you fucking hire them? What the <laughs> fuck? Why don't you? Why don't you talk to them? And there was a fear. There was some kind of fear about producers talking to their characters and 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 yeah. stuff about developing those characters. And they really relied on the episodic director to come in, who literally had no relationship really in the beginning. Right. To have those conversations and where actors would look at them and go, "Where are you getting this information?" Yeah, and it's being blamed. You're being blamed as if you just came up with this concept, and meanwhile. 
exactly you've been we're, sent on this suicide mission. It was put into me by somebody, whether it be Kate Adams or you know uh, Ron Moore or those guys on your show, right? You know, talking about it, and it's like, okay, well, I'll do my best with this, you know. And right. then I would have to come tell somebody like Brendan, you know, hey, dude, you got to do it this way, da 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 da. Who would look at me like he was going to kill me? So right, like, right. How do you deal with that? You know, you were always open. I didn't mean you were going to kill me, but no, yeah, no, I no, I understand what you're no, saying. He meant That's me. Funny. I was always open. He, he is. Open. Um, he you were totally <laughs> open. By the way, you're always open. You're always into it. You know. Thanks, but Patrick. Although that sweeping situation was tough, <laughs> but it's fine. But now that's the thing that you had said before when you came in, because I think this is truly the art that no one touches on. And it's also, it's a superpower. And it's also, it's a, it's a lot to bear is the ability to walk into a room and, and get a feel and sort of understand where everyone's at and know how to give the specific message to that person and what they will hear and won't. And so when you came onto our set, what was that like what were your initial impressions of everyone these kids that you had to talk to that you don't even you know they have no concept of the world maybe they do maybe they don't that's just got to be such a wild thing to manage I wouldn't even know where to start you know it's I don't know you know it, it's interesting I, I remember like when I remember trying to explain a scene to uh, Claire Danes after she was supposed to have a night with Jared Leto, you know, on my so-called life. Yeah. Supposed to have had a connection that night, you know, and, and hooked up and all this. Right. I went into the conversation, the aftermath conversation, saying, well, you know, after you make love to somebody, you're kind of feeling a little more insecure as opposed to secure about it, but it's fun. It was a great experience, but is it going to happen again? And she looked me right in the eye and she goes, I never made love to anybody. I went, Okay. Um, <laughs> let me back up. <laughs> and it, it, was a, it was a valuable, it was a valuable note for me as a director to not assume that everybody has had this experience that they're going right. to have. Right. Like, so, what's the comparable <laughs> thing then to explain I to what just... was fourteen? <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. Oh. And and when I would work on young shows, I would know not to say that anymore. Um, right. Based- or maybe you could, you know, yeah. Because you worked on, I mean, a, a lot of the shows you worked on were young shows, from ours yeah. to Dawson's Creek to Pretty Little Liars, obviously yeah. Gossip Girl. So you have worked with, you know, like even that's... though it was you know, Hollywood young, you know, where we're, you know, 22, um, you know, as 16 year olds or <laughs> whatnot. But they, I mean, they, these are were. people whose brains haven't even fully developed. Yeah. That's what it, a challenge. Yeah, mine included. <laughs> And, you know, I was still in high school mentally every show. I and uh, yeah. and uh, it, it is, it's something you learn as you go, but you also, you also learn to, and, and one of my favorite things that, you know, I worked at, you know, I watched directors like um, Arthur Penn, uh, Blake Edwards and Robert Redford and all these guys who I worked with when I was doing costumes and stuff. And I really paid attention to these guys and these, you know, women who were out doing stuff. And um, the one thing I loved about Blake Edwards when I would go watch a rehearsal that he was going to do with like, you know, really cool actors, whether people forget these people now, but Amy Irving and, and, um, and Bancroft or whoever, you know, um, uh, Dudley Moore, who I just adored. Yeah. Blake would come out with a cup of coffee, the actors would come out, and he'd say, Do you guys know what you want to do? And I that registered with me mm. as, as a new director. Like, well, I could actually say to them, Do you know what you want to do here? Right. And if they knew the scene, they knew the lines, they would say, Yeah. And I'd right. say, Let's see it, let's rehearse. And that that was such a beautiful thing to be able to unfold that flower and and then shoot it because it's it's like we all participated in the moment you know and my mo is is basically to talk to the actress usually and say hey, look here's my intention here's what i want to shoot here's what i want to see right and they're comfortable and they're on board with that cool let's do it if they're not let's change it let's make it however you're comfortable you know and it just seemed like on on our show way back when, when we didn't have all the walls and didn't have all the stuff going on, um, 
I knew there was chemistry with everybody in there. I knew that, you know, that um, there was stuff going on between all you folks, you know. Uh, uh, right. <laughs> it was pretty obvious when we yeah, were getting palpable. along and when we weren't getting along. Yeah. <laughs> well, I knew that I didn't have to walk anybody through anything. Right. Right. All I had to do is say, this is my intention. This is what I want to do. And you guys would just connect. And it would happen when it happened. It wasn't like, oh, you have to do it on this line. Or you have right. to turn on this line. Or you have to do that. It was like, let it happen. Feel okay. it. Show it. And thank God we got to leave the space in when you did feel it. You know, it just wasn't cut out. Right. You know? Well, did that's we... what it's always so fascinating to me, though, about Roswell. Just continuing to have this passionate fan base i wonder if that is the thing that they're picking up on is that there was so much of a natural chemistry <laughs> amongst everybody it, right. it wasn't this sanitized thing and i wonder if there's like a palpable aspect that is sort of jumping off the screen that we don't notice because it's normal to us um that that connects with people i don't know because it's true when it was how we many were... people trusted your character that you were representing right and then because we were trusted. Of you, all of you. Yeah. You know, I don't know. There wasn't as much. Um, there wasn't as much uh, voices going on about what right. we had to do. How you know it was mainly production. How we had to get it done and get it done, or we couldn't shoot there because of this or that. Or there was yeah, too typical. much work there. How can we put some of it on stage or shit like that? That was that was the mechanics that made it all great. To figure right. It out. Right, um, but there weren't the 900 movie. cooks in the kitchen, essentially. Uh, right, there but when when you guys were doing your scenes, you were trusted just as well. And even and there wasn't like a writer on the set. There wasn't like, and if there was a writer, they were just stopping by. They always had a note, they always had a note, but they'd leave. Right. Well, because right. They, they didn't like waiting two hours for a lighting set, <laughs> like right. the rest of us. You know, right. So <laughs> Um, but I think that that it was a story about the director, the actors, and the DP making that environment that you guys were able to share. But this is what happens, you know. I mean, I look at us all, no matter what what show I'm on, we go into this dysfunctional family. Yes. Okay? And our dysfunctional family spends more time together than our real family. I, and and I will say um, not to uh, we won't keep you any longer. We'll kind of wrap it up. But I think I speak for Mahandra <laughs> kind of, and and myself. Always. Well, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, if um, I mean uh, if Baron and Toluca ever goes, which we think it will, um, you are always the first on our list. Um, I know, Patrick. We, we're gonna have to drag you out of retirement. I think we gotta so drag sorry. you out of retirement and come have fun. <laughs> a little with us bit for, of dust. Uh, I, have, I, I have my own hammer. You, yeah. you do bring. <laughs> we'll you bring, bring own that. hammer. <laughs> but um, you would. You were always the first on our list. It um, just our wish list. Yeah. Even going through it from when it wasn't even a thing to when it was gonna be a thing to now that we actually got it done and going on um your name kind of just never escapes our brains and our hearts and we're always and we're always just like if we could get him um you know that 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 would be that would be the guy so um you know i'm always always, always going to come and have a cup of coffee on your set too man you know i look at it this way you know i i should have a card that i could pull up to any company that i see shooting and just hey can i get a cup of coffee <laughs> um, <laughs> totally yeah. one free coffee just for any set I my time i have an all access bracelet exactly. um, you know what to do like, you know what not to do it's like i'll, I'll be good totally. right I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd, be good. I'd love to work with you guys again in any capacity but uh you know if that happens you can just call me you got my number I'd love that. And Patrick, we won't set you up in a situation where you're, you know, once again, policed to the point that most. We're the policemen and I won't beat you up and I'll actually listen to you. I would be so honored, man. (laughs) I got to tell you right now, it'd be like, it would be like beating up, you know, a stuffed animal. (laughs) (laughs) Careful. Brendan's feeling a little overweight these days. So let's not bring that up. I will bring my broom. I got my green tea. It's fine. It was interesting to just trust people and just see what happens. Yeah. And that's where I'm more comfortable. 
Yeah. That's yeah. And you did. You you definitely you were one of the, you know, um, you you were always there. You felt like you were, I mean, and you were, you were part of the family. Um, you know, you directed the most episodes. Oh, yeah. Every time you came on set, um, we got excited and we did feel like it was um one of those times where you did let us and allowed us to fly. And um, you directed some of the most iconic episodes. And um, you know. And it was, you're just one of my favorite directors and people in the entire Plus, world. we did a couple of really, like, really cheesy episodes. And yeah. I got to tell you something. At least we got on board and did it together. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It was a trust fall for all of us. We yeah. did. <laughs> and I'll we tell did. you this, Patrick. You, I mean, there's so many memories that we have. But there was a piece of advice that you gave that I still utilize till this day. Oh, I know was, what this is. Which was. Are you going to say this for real? Of course. I mean, oh, I, okay. you speak for yourself, but it was in a, in a couple. A relationship. Things, yeah. That's what yeah. a couple is. Well, I'm like in a couple moments. years, <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> you know, in a couple, in a relationship, when there's discourse, fighting, miscommunication, whatever it is, just make love, man. Make love. <laughs> That's <laughs> sure is the problem, doesn't it? <laughs> It's like you can't see eye to eye on something. You can't, you know, blah, blah, blah. This one wanted to go here. You want to go there. You, She wants Thai food that night. He wants it, whatever. Make love. And by the way, truer words have never been spoken. I mean, that is, that's it. <laughs> hey, well, I dig it, man. And, you know, for that, David thanks you, I'm sure. But uh, it really, <laughs> it really of, did. There's actually a lot exactly. of single people that appreciate that too. <laughs> But I will say, it mind blowing. It's yeah. so simple, but so true, so well, beautiful. We were um, always in your corner, and we'll always be in your corner, and we we love you to to death. Back at you, man. To the end. I'll, hope to see you in the future sometime. We Thank you so will. much for doing Thanks. this, Patrick. The first guest ever. First guest. Huh? Yeah, Roswell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks. All right. All right. See you later. All right. Bye, Patrick. Bye, bud.